Take one. Mark. Amazing. We don't have to clap or anything. That was that. You already did it. Yeah. Oh, great. Way ahead of me. Okay, we're here. Denise O'Sullivan is one of the best teammates and best players that I have ever had the honor of playing with. We played together from 2017 to 2021 on the North Carolina Courage, where she still plays and captains the team. Together, we won three NWSL Shields and two NWSL Championships. Denise is known for her ability to connect passes and break up the opposition's attack. She has incredible instincts defensively and makes everybody around her look good, especially me. She made me look really good at times. Denise is small but mighty. She also plays for the Ireland women's national team, a team that qualified for the 2023 World Cup for the first time in history. Denise has accumulated over 100 caps for her country. I don't know if I can explain the impact that Denise has on her teams. She's a true leader. She shows up for everybody. She can handle difficult situations. She genuinely wants what's best for the team, and she backs all of this up by being one of the best players in the world. It's hard for me to think of a better person, a better player, and a better teammate than Denise. Denise, welcome to the women's game. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me. And that was really sweet. My goodness. I know. I'm it was crying. <laughs> it was such a joy to write. And just so everybody knows, I called Denise Sully. So calling her Denise 10 times in the intro was so wild of me, and I'm going to stop doing it now, and I'm going to call her Sully. We are here recording this episode in person in North Carolina, and this is my first in-person interview. I'm so honored that it's you. How does it feel? It's amazing. Yeah, I'm just happy to be on this with you and have you back at Courage Country. Um, we miss you so much here, and we love you so much. This club adores you, but yeah, thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for saying that. I like really do feel the love. We've had so much support being here. It's been so much fun to be back. I feel like you have built such an amazing community around you here in the Raleigh area. You're so beloved by the club, by the fans. I feel like you have people in your life here. Um, what is the best part about playing for the same club for so long? This is going to be your eighth year in Raleigh, I think. Yeah, eighth year. I joined the Courage in 2017 from Houston. Um, I remember, I always remember my first day coming to the Courage. I was young and I was intimidated and I was so nervous. And I did not know what to expect, but I, was, I knew I was coming into world-class players like yourself and a, a lot of other players. So I was very nervous. But the minute I got here, like everyone made me feel so welcome. And that's been the best thing um, from day one. This club has made me feel like I've been at home. Um, and yeah, every single year, it just keeps getting better. I think the best thing about this club is the culture that we keep creating. Um, and look, it comes from people like yourself from being here from day one and creating that culture. And now it's up to me to continue that and make this a happy place for players to come, a comfortable place where they can just come and, and fit in and make them feel valued. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, I think my experience being here, we always talked about the culture so much. And I have a couple more questions about the culture of the courage that I'm going to get to in a few minutes. But I wanted to just start. We're back here in the stadium that we train and play out of. And we used to be locker buddies. I know. Right next to each other for years. Do you remember anything weird that I used to do at my locker? <laughs> I do. I rem Sam, there's a f probably once or twice before it was a big game here oh God. and you were just crying in the locker. No, but like it just shows that you were so competitive and it just shows that you loved the club so much because you were, you just wanted to win. And that you I was were, so bad that I was crying before you were, the game. But like that showed me how much the club <laughs> meant to you. <laughs> I know it's actually hilarious, but it's like, wow, this club means a lot to Sam Lewis. And when I'm around someone like that every day, you learn from those people and you continue to do that. So there was funny times, but. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that you remember that. I think that when I think back on that time and just how emotional I was before these big games that we had, I think that what was happening was we were going through this, the league was really up and coming. And mm -hmm. I felt like sometimes it was easy for players to prioritize the national team over their club team sure. from every country because mm -hmm. the NWSL was newer and it was still growing and it wasn't what it is today. And I think that for some reason, I think it's because I had such a feeling of that I belonged here and that I like belonged in the locker room and that the team accepted me and loved me. I cared so much about the club equally to the national team. I always said I have two main priorities and being around people like you, being around 
our teammates like Lynn Williams and Abby Dahlkemper, like it made this environment so, so special to be a part of. It made every game mean so much to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to talk a little bit about one of the things I think shaped our culture so much as was fitness. Um, and I know that you in particular, I remember so specifically we'd be in the gym and like Sully would be like lifting more than me. She's so <laughs> strong. She's so fit. Um, tell me a little bit about how you view your strength and fitness. Like you're one of the smaller players on the field, but you're the engine, you're sticking tackles. Like how do you view your strength and fitness as part of your game? Um, it's a big thing. I think when I first came to the US, it was a shock to the system. Honestly, I couldn't squat when I got to Houston. <laughs> like, I was so small with no muscle, but yeah, it was just something I had to learn and I had to get better at and I knew it. Um, so since then, I just really tried to prioritize that and um, get better at it. But now, I think just outside of even the courage, I really focus on it still. Um, everything I do outside of courage, I'm just... 100% focused and I just want to be the best player for the team. So for me, I'm always in the gym. And look, the environment here with the courage, Sean, the staff, the sessions they put on, it's phenomenal. And Mike also we have, one mm -hmm. of the best in the world. So when you have all those people behind the scenes um, putting in the effort, that, that goes a long way and it's helped me a lot. But um, yeah, I think in this league, it's quick, it's fast, there's strong people. Um, so I need to, I needed to get there. Um, and I, I still have a lot of work to do, but I think I'm really after improving on that side, I would say. Yeah, you mentioned Mike Young, who's like the sports science, strength and conditioning. He's like a world renowned at this job and he's been working with The Courage for years. And being here, being back at the stadium, the training fields, I have such vivid memories of running fitness here. Um, this is really unique because The Courage both trains and plays out of this facility. And so one of my other favorite memories is from the stadium, from the 2019 final, when we played Chicago. And I feel like it was a time like we had been kind of just winning everything, we mm -hmm. were doing really great. So I feel like everybody was kind of rooting against us, but we got this opportunity to play in our home stadium in front of our home fans. And we ended up winning the final four to nothing. Yeah. We like crushed it. And mm -hmm. I think in some ways, like the team changed a lot after that. It was COVID, right. players left. Um, a lot of players have moved on since and you guys have won the Challenge Cup twice since then, but no shield and no championship yet. So what do you remember specifically about that 2019 final that I know means so much to me and I imagine means so much to you too? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was phenomenal. We had an unbelievable team back then. We were always winning, as you said, but I think just playing in your home field was like the most memorable. It was so good um, just to do it with your teammates. I remember the feeling and it was it was nothing like I, I would, you know, kind of can't even explain. It was just amazing. Yeah. I know, it was so, so special. I think I've been saying this repeatedly being here that in so many ways, 2019 and my time here at The Courage was like the prime of my career and like the peak of my existence. And I, thinking back on that final in particular, I wish I had known that then, mm -hmm. that that would be the time I would look back on and be like, wow, thank God I did that. Thank God I was a part of this team. And I'm now with the perspective that I have in my career being cut a little bit short, I'm so grateful mm -hmm. for that time. I just want to take a minute and go through some of the players that we played with here. Dabinia, Lynn Williams, Crystal Dunn, Abby Dahlkemper, Abby Ursig, Jess McDonald, McCall Zerboni, Merritt Mathias. The list, I forgot people, but like the list goes on. These are some of the biggest, most successful players. And we all played here together. We won multiple shields, multiple championships. How do you think that the foundation of the club was built upon those players and the success that we started out having here. Like, what was it about our team then that made our experience here and the foundation of the club come together the way it has? I think the mentality of the team was just, it was unbelievable. Um, and I was only here a few, 2019, two years then. And look, I wish I, I when I look back, I, didn't really know what I was in at the time. Mm -hmm. And now looking back, I'm like, wow, that was like, they were the best years of, of my life and um, of my career. And like playing with you and as you, you name those girls, they're just the impact that you guys have on me as a player then. I learned so much in that time, but um, from then to now, I think the club just keeps putting in the work. 
the club is getting better and better. I think obviously went through a rough patch and, and that happens, that happens um, everywhere. And the club now is just pushing it on. And I think it's amazing to see and um, me as captain, I want to continue to do that. I want to leave the club in the, in the best place possible for these younger girls coming in next. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. What does training feel like? Like, what's the same about the culture of the team now as it was then? Like, what's an example that will happen out at training that you're like, this is, this is what the courage is all about? I think the standards. I think Sean holds, he, it starts with the coaching staff and they set, they set the tone of the training sessions. And if something's not going right, Sean will stop the session. He'll drag everyone in and he said, this is not good enough. And I love that. It's just great um, that it starts from them. And, um, and then it, that shows us as players that we need to continue to do that. So um, I think that just the setting the standards is really important for this team. Um, and yeah, we, we just got to keep doing that. Yeah. Well, I've been living in my glory days, rehashing everything that I've loved about this place so much. But I want to talk about the team this year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so excited to be back here. We're here at Wake Med Soccer Park ahead of the start of the 2024 season. And you have some incredible players on your roster now. I named all these former players. You have Casey Murphy, Ashley Sanchez, Caroline. Caroline is currently recovering from an ACL injury. But tell me a little bit about the team this year. Like, what can we expect? Who are you excited to be playing with? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic, and I think the, the team changes every year, but I think the club have done a fantastic job in, in the off-season and bringing new players in, and as you said, adding Ashley Sanchez um, as one player. We've a lot more players also, but I think it's a mix of youth and experience, mm -hmm. and it's, it's really fantastic, but I'm, I'm excited to play with everyone. I don't want to single anyone out because I think everyone adds value themselves. They all have different attributes, and I think that's really important for the team, but... Um, I think we are a possession-based team and we're going to, I love to play football, so it's really fun and last year we played great football um, and I think that's what we can expect from the team this year as well, but I just think we can expect a hard-working team again, a gritty team that's going to fight for this crest and, and, and not give up at any stage no matter what's happening in the games. Oh, I wish I could just suit up for the courage again. <laughs> I wish you could too. <laughs> <laughs> what are the rookies like? Like, these are young 21, 22 year old players, some of them coming in from college, some of them younger. Mm -hmm. What do the young players bring to this roster? Yeah, they're great. And um, at first, they're intimidated and, and they, have, they take time to get used to being in this new environment. And I've, I've spoken to a few of them about it and just about how different it is coming into this professional environment and getting used to the training sessions. But yeah, as I said, they all bring something different. and. Um, it's up to the veterans to really bring those rookies in here and make them feel welcome, but also have the balance of pushing them as well and um, making sure that they meet the standards of what we're trying, trying to bring to the team. Yeah, and as captain and as a veteran, somebody who's been here at The Courage the, like, the longest, what kinds of things do you say to them to help prepare them? How do you teach the culture of this club to the new players? Yeah, I mean, I've had uh, chats with plenty of them, and um, I think it's just making them feel valuable. I think it's telling them that you're here for a reason and you deserve to be here. So always remember that, but it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. I came to the courage and it took me at least a year to, to get used to things. So I think you have to remind them that it's going, it's a long journey ahead and it is going to be tough, but, um, you got to have perseverance and you got to go through that to really yeah. get used to it, you know? Yeah. But, um, they're great, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking just today, watching Ryan Williams training, when Ryan Williams came to this club, she didn't get a lot of playing time right off the bat. Crazy. She was a rookie, she had to adjust, and now she plays a lot of minutes, maybe starting. Um, I think exactly what you're saying, like telling rookies that it's not gonna happen overnight yeah. for some of them, mm -hmm. um, but to have examples like Ryan here in your locker room who have been in their shoes and wound up where they are, I think is so amazing. I feel like the courage like walks the walk of saying, if you do all these things right, you'll get what you want. For sure. And Ryan is a prime example. KK is another example. That's um, Kaylee Kurtz. Yeah, back, Kaylee yeah. Kurtz. Yeah, who came, who came to the courage and took a few years really yeah. to, to get a contract and they just worked their backsides off the yeah. whole time, never complained. Um, as you're saying about Ryan, she never once complained. She sat on the bench, she cheered on her teammates, 
um, and now she's a leader on the team. Mm -hmm. She's been fantastic and she just keeps getting better and better and her growth has been amazing to watch and I'm very proud of her. Yeah, yeah. I heard she organized book club. <laughs> did you go to book I club? I didn't go to book club. <laughs> She'll be very disappointed <laughs> in me. But she did organize that, yeah, she did. Ah, oh, I love I that. I know, I keep hearing stories about it and they're having a great time. <laughs> um, <laughs> what does being captain of The Courage mean to you? It means so much, honestly. The way you speak about The Courage and how much you love it, I, I feel that also. I just love the club. And looking back now at my career and joining the Courage in 2017 to now being captain, did I ever think that was going to happen? Not in a million years. Like, it's crazy, but it's the biggest honor. And it's also a learning curve for me. I've, I've only been captain since last year and had to learn a lot along the way. It wasn't easy, but it's been the best. Yeah, it's been the biggest honor of my career. What do you think you bring to the captaincy that makes you well suited for that position? Um, I think on and off the pitch, I just do everything that needs to be done to be the best I can for the team. And I hold people accountable. First of all, I hold myself accountable. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important that if you're not doing the things and people are trying to follow your example, then it goes out the window, there's, there's nothing to it. So first of all, I hold myself accountable and I try to do every single thing I can off the field properly and then hope that that follows and you're an example to them. But um, also, I just think being a good person is very important when you're a captain. I think, um, as you said, when those rookies come in, just make them feel valuable, make everyone in the team feel valuable and um, create that good culture. Yeah, well, you've... You and Sean have really come together. Um, obviously, the courage went through a difficult period, mm -hmm. reckoning with the former coaches, abusive players in the league. And so I want to ask you about Sean specifically and how he has responded to this difficult moment, he transitioned into being head coach, and you've worked closely with him being captain, being leader. What have you seen from Sean that makes him so suited to be head coach here at the courage? Sean's been fantastic, and I've had, I have a really good relationship with Sean, which is important for a captain and a head coach. Um, when I came to the club in 2017, Sean was here. He was doing video. So he's a massive part of this club, and I can just see through Sean that he adores this club mm -hmm. so much. And you can, you can see it with the players. It's, he cares about it so much, and he brings so much value to this team. He works his backside off. He's in the office all day and um, watching video, but his tactical side of the game also is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He is so smart um, in what he sees on the pitch and, and why he tells us little details. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been great working with him. And then in terms of the response to what happened in 2021, what have you seen from the club in, in terms of taking a step forward from that? Yeah, obviously they went through a really tough time. Um, I've seen it firsthand as a player here and it was, it was a really sad time as well, but the club have they have pushed on. I think the club does everything in their power now to make players feel like they're, they're at a professional level. Um, they've really worked hard. I think the, the attendances, they're working behind the scenes extremely hard to grow those. Um, and hopefully we'll see that this year. Um, but yeah, I think they're making the player experience really, really good. And um, I think that's very important and that players are happy and uh, we're doing everything we can to, to promote the club in the best way possible. But they're doing a fantastic job and it is it is great to see. Yeah, in my even in just my dealings, I've been here for like 24 hours. It's been incredibly professional. Your locker room looks amazing. There were so many extra staff out at I know, it's crazy. Like look even all these be. right here. We have yeah. like 10 people watching this right now. I think the growth from the club is matching the growth from the league. I mean, mm -hmm. the the NWSL is has come so far since when we entered the league and to see the courage continue to evolve and grow and invest in you guys as players, I think we'll have incredible returns. You all deserve the investment and mm -hmm. of course we'll make the most of it. Okay, I love the courage. I could talk about the courage all day, but I want to ask you a couple questions about Ireland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you grew up in Cork, right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what was football like when you were growing up? I've interviewed some um, other players recently like Jill Scott and Lucy Bronze who grew up playing in England. And they've told me that 
Jill Scott in particular told me that finding a girls team was hard. Yeah. She grew up playing with boys. She has a, a whole bunch of stories about what it was like growing up playing with boys, but what was your experience like? Pretty similar, honestly, yeah. There was probably a girls team within 25 minutes of me. Um, and at the time, I'm the youngest of 10, my mom and dad could not afford, did not have the time to drive me back and forth to those kind of practices. So there was a boys team within a five minute walk. Um, and I joined that boys team when I was about six, seven years old. And yeah, it just went up from there. I loved playing with the boys team. It was absolutely amazing. And every summer we would have um, a tournament and it would be all boys and me <laughs> <laughs> playing in it. And then I played a lot of street football as well. So I have five brothers grew up on the streets playing with them and that's all I done from honestly the time I came in from school 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. just out all day um, using sweaters as goalposts all that stuff <laughs> it was it was wild yeah so but it's been the best thing ever I think any opportunity young kids can get I think the way to go is to play about boys because I think it really helped my career yeah when did you start imagining that playing professionally overseas or playing for the Ireland national team might be a reality um, I think when I was about 14, 15, I was kind of getting called up to the Irish schools team in Ireland at the time. Um, and then my first professional contract came around when I was 18. And it took me about six months to decide whether I wanted to leave home at that time. And um, kept going back and forth. The coach would call my parents and, and I would actually say to them, Mom, Dad, tell them I'm not here. I don't want to speak to them. <laughs> yeah, and there was one night where I just, it just clicked and I was like, I want to go and play professional. So I was about 17 when I finally made the decision that I wanted to, to go play pro and um, really take it on board, play with national team and everything, yeah. What was holding you back? Like, were you just afraid of leaving home? I think so. Yeah. I think um, growing up as the youngest of 10, mm. having so many people around you every day, um, my brother has been so protective of me. Just that thought of leaving home and being by myself with no one to really protect me, I think that really scared me. Um, but yeah, I, I just had to make the move to, to better my career. I knew it at the time that I needed to leave Ireland to, to really go far in football, but there was also that barrier of leaving my family that was really tough. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it all paid off. You were part of the Ireland team that made history in 2023 as you took part in the World Cup for the first time in your nation's history. To qualify, you went through such a nerve-wracking <laughs> qualifying game back in October of 2022. It was a gritty one to nothing win over Scotland. Can you tell us a little bit about what it felt like in the moment that you qualified? Oh, it was surreal. It was just the best feeling ever. Um, I think the team went through many heartbreaks of not qualifying for tournaments and that really stung. So to be able to, to qualify for the World Cup, such a major tournament was the best time of my career. It was just unbelievable. It was against Scotland, a lot of Irish fans, their families were over. Um, yeah, it was phenomenal. What did you guys do to celebrate? <laughs> I don't know if I should say <laughs> <laughs> We celebrated good, I'll like, tell I you that. I imagine you yeah. had some beers. Yes. yes, there was a lot of beers, <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. It was great. And then we got back to work again as soon as that was over. Oh, amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I I would give anything to celebrate a championship again. It really is just so fun. It's it is. It really is. Um, so on the eve of the World Cup, just six days before the first game, you mm -hmm. had an injury scare that caused all of us to like hold our collective breath to see if you'd be fit for the game. The injury happened in a closed door friendly against Colombia that actually got the game got abandoned because after you went down, there was it was just overly physical play. Mm -hmm. The game you guys walked away from the game. In that moment where you're injured and it's six days before the World Cup that you've waited for your whole life, Ireland has waited for its whole life. What's going through your mind when you don't know the extent of your injury? I mean, I definitely thought I just wasn't going to the World Cup at the time. I was like getting on the stretcher, feeling the pain that I was feeling. I was just like I'm. I was. I was scared. Yeah. What was injured? It was my ankle, foot, yeah. Um, Dangerous area. It was just a, yeah, it just a, a challenge and just above the ankle high and I thought it was worse than what it was. But luckily, um, I was able to go to the World Cup and, and represent my country. So that was, that was the main thing. Yes, thankfully <laughs> you were fit to play. You started Ireland's first game against Australia 
And I know how much playing for your country means to you. So can you take me inside the moment you're lining up for the first time at a World Cup for Ireland, the Irish national anthem is playing. Was that the moment that it all clicked? Like what was going through your mind then? Yeah, I think walking out in the tunnel and um, not even seeing the fans, but just hearing them, it was just phenomenal. And it did click then, it was wow. It was a wow moment for me. Um, but there was 80,000 people in that stadium and a lot of Irish fans there, <laughs> like a lot of Irish fans. So we could hear them singing our chants and it was just the proudest moment of my career for sure. That's yeah. so amazing. Playing Australia though, in the opening game of the World Cup in Australia, that must have been, was the yeah. energy just palpable? It was, yeah. I, I mean, the adrenaline was just unbelievable. Um, as I said, playing for your country is like, it's the pinnacle and it's, I love Ireland. I love playing for my country. So to be able to represent um, not just the team, but every single person in Ireland, um, it was phenomenal and it was it was the best feeling ever. Obviously we lost and it was disappointing, but to be there to see young kids in Ireland shirts, to see families there supporting us, it was it was definitely something I'll never forget. Yeah. Yeah, I remember in twenty nineteen at my first and only World Cup when the national anthem was playing before the first game. I just only was thinking about my family and I was like, I can't believe I'm here. My family got me here. Like yeah. I felt so connected to my family in that mm -hmm. moment for all the sacrifices my parents especially had made. Um, and I imagine it must have felt similar for you. I know you have a really big family in Ireland. So what was it like for them to watch you make this World Cup roster and go and represent Ireland? Did they all watch together? Was there like a watch party? And like, what did it mean for them? Yeah, it meant so much to them. I mean, my family is everything to me, as you said. Um, they've made so many sacrifices um, along the way and the reason I'm here today is because of them and unfortunately they couldn't go to the World Cup um, in Australia but they did have a lot of watch parties back in, back in Cork at the bars. <laughs> so they, they had a lot of fun um, yeah there was hundreds of them got together and right before I actually went to the World Cup we had a camp against France and my family told me to come home to see them, which obviously I wanted to. So I went back there and there was probably 600 people in my estate, like a send off party. There like was at your a house? marching band. At yeah. your house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my family organized it. Like there was media there. What? It, it was like crazy. There was a marching band. Like <laughs> thinking of it now, it's so funny because I was just standing there and I was just surrounded by like, all the people I grew up with, my childhood friends, um, and like, <laughs> it was wild. My community obviously means a lot to me and they've done a lot for me growing up as well. So to have that moment with my family and them, for them to send me off to the World Cup, it was really special, but it was also hilarious. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. <laughs> I love that. Well, unfortunately, and this was not a reflection of you guys' performance, you guys did come in last in your group, mm -hmm. but you had close games with Australia, Nigeria, and Canada. Overall, you guys belonged at the World Cup 100%. What was your overall World Cup experience like? It was great. I mean, look, I'm, I was so lucky to be able to participate in the World Cup. It's, it's every footballers dream to do that so I was so grateful to be there and, and with my teammates and yeah it was fantastic but it also was a tough and an eye-opener a tough experience and an eye-opener because you're playing those games and you realize like wow this is where I need to be to be able to play in these World Cups mm -hmm. you know and where this team needs to be and to play against Australia Canada those teams they're just so at, they're just at such a high level and mm -hmm. um, we can definitely take lessons away and and um, we'll be able to prepare better for the next tournaments for sure. Which hopefully will be the Euros, but you did just get put into a pretty formidable group. Um, Ireland is set to face France, England, and Sweden for your Euro 2025 mm -hmm. qualifying group. Uh, how are you and your Ireland teammates feeling about that? Personally, I'm feeling great. I can't wait for it. Um, I think as a professional footballer, you wanna be playing against the top teams in the world. It's just the best feeling. It challenges you. You're playing against the best players in the world. So I am very excited. It is an extremely tough group. We know, I think they're, are they like third, fourth, and fifth in the world? Something like in that, yeah, they're like top 10 in the world. So to come up against them, it's going to be a challenge. We know it's going to be extremely difficult, but we went through um, 
Group B, and we we done really well. So I think we do belong in Group A, but it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. But I think we're excited for it. Good. Well, um, one more question about Ireland. One of your Ireland teammates, Katie McCabe, is I, I love her. She's like notorious for being feisty. I think some people are using the word shithousery. <laughs> yeah. How much is that kind and and honestly, you're you get into tackles too. Like you're mm-hmm. feisty out there. I freaking love it. You would like fight all my battles for me. <laughs> this big six foot huge girl would have you fighting my battles for me. How much is that reputation like a part of Ireland's identity as a team? Do you guys pride yourselves on being really tough to play against? Yeah, for sure. Um and I think it's just competitiveness. I think people get mixed up with Katie being like, as you said, shithousery, and I actually love it. <laughs> I do too. Like, I do love it. She's so, she just have a competitive mentality, and she wants to, to be the best, and she wants to play against the best, and, and that's just the way she is, but that's what it's like with the national team. We are, we're a physical team, that's our identity, and um, we're organized, and yeah, we like to throw in tackles, but on the other hand, we're not like, we don't want to injure anyone, you no. know? You know no, that kind of, of way? Course, yeah. yeah, so it's just our identity and we're very passionate about playing for our country and um, we want to win, so we go in hard in tackles and get into some pickles on the field with players, but and at the end of the day, it's all, it's all good. Well, I'm going to have a beer when you guys qualify for the Euros. I'm very excited <laughs> about that. Okay, to wrap this up, I am back here in Raleigh for the first time in a while. And I feel like it's changed a lot. Can you quickly give us a couple recommendations for anybody coming into town for a North Carolina Courage game mm-hmm. this year? What is your favorite coffee spot? Favorite coffee spot would be Iris Coffee. Um, and another one is Jubala. So they're my top two spots. I love Jubala. Where's Iris? Iris is also downtown. Okay. Yeah. And it's a really cute, like, um, it's kind of a hidden spot. It's just really cute and very good coffee so good I would know. recommend those two great what yeah. about favorite place to go for dinner sushi is my favorite food so I would say city market which is also downtown our M sushi which we actually have right here at the Fenton um, it's in walking distance from the stadium and it's amazing M sushi M sushi you can yeah. walk to the stadium from there yes if you're coming to a yeah game. so people do the the walk in the woods kind of thing, I think. Oh. And um, it takes you to the Fenton, and that's little, where it is. A little insider information here. Yes. What about, what's your favorite non-soccer activity to do in Raleigh? Um, I am obsessed, honestly, talking about coffee. Like, I want, <laughs> I want to become a barista. Ooh. Yes. So um, I have been speaking to a few coffee shops, one in particular here in Raleigh, that I'm going to go and do on training. Yeah. I'm going to be there and like do shifts for them just to practice and actually become a barista. So that's like an activity that I do on the side. And um, I have my own espresso machine at home that I practice with latte art and all that stuff. So yeah, I love it. I did not (laughs) know that about you. (laughs) Yeah. Will you make me a latte? Anytime. What will you put on the top? A heart? A love heart. A love heart! Just for you, Sam. (laughs) Okay, is there something about this area that you don't think people associate? Like people think North Carolina, they think barbecue, they think North Carolina Courage. Is there something surprising about the area? Hmm. Um, I don't know, surprising. I just think, I just love Raleigh in general. I think it's a great, it's a great city. And look, we have the beach, we have the mountains in North Carolina. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just, I just love being here and it's great food great coffee as you said but I can't really think of anything like surprising that's okay yeah sorry that's right. no that's okay <laughs> that's great I've been surprised being here how much it's changed and how much like that North Hills area has grown yeah, there's grown a lot. so much more around mm-hmm. there um I have one final question for you looking at your journey so far from Cork Ireland to North Carolina to making history at the World Cup who has had the most influence on your life and what would you want to say to thank them Definitely my family, um, for sure. That's the f- first people I think of. And um, they've made, growing up, they've made so, so many sacrifices for me. Parents dropped me, driving me hours upon hours to tournaments, um, buying me cleats when they didn't, when they weren't able to. They just done everything in their power to make sure that I was able to get what I wanted. And for me, I loved football. So they done everything in their power to help me to get here today. Um, and it's been, it's been a journey, but they've been on this journey with me the whole way, and I can't thank them enough for what they've done. 
That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Sully, I am so happy we got to do this here in person. This was so amazing and fun. It was such an honor to play alongside of you and even more special to get to know you as a person and to be your teammate. I know that you have so much success ahead of you because I see how hard you work to make things happen for yourself. You're a tireless leader, you're a fighter, and you're such an incredibly gifted player. I love the courage so much and it's because I have such special memories with people like you. So thank you so much for coming on the women's game and being a guest. It means so much to me. Thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ellie. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs>